Have you ever made a client cry? How about two clients? <laughs> well, I have. This is uh, the Solo Gardener podcast, and uh, I'm your Merry Gardener. This is episode nine, and in all my 30 years of gardening, I've made two of my clients cry. <laughs> and. <laughs> I can tell you it was an experience. Uh, one bad, sorry, one bad, and the other one was good. Um, and I'm going to tell you about it today. It's quite funny. Um, so I'll tell you the bad one first. Let's start there. <laughs> I used to work for a lady called Dorothy. Um, if you've been in the gardening game, you, you, you pick up a lot of old ladies um, because, you know, they they... They get on a bit and they can't do the garden. So you come along and you do, you do what you can because a lot of them don't have too much money. And um, yeah, you do like an hour or two hours here and there. And this old lady, uh, bless her, she had this What I've actually told this story before. I told this story on the Bearded Growers radio. Um, and I went, I went there with a whole bunch of different stories and I briefly went into this one. And... Um, <laughs> so I got there and she's always getting me to do a little extra. So I used to cut the lawn, I used to do the borders and stuff. And um, yeah, a tiny little garden, really. She's front and back garden. And she had a lovely lily in a pot. And she said to me, um, would you mind getting those lilies out, putting them in the garden? Oh, yeah, no problem at all. Where's the lilies? Where's the pot? So she goes, oh, they're just down the side here. So we go and look at the lilies. And she shows me the pot. It's the, this is the problem. The pot's the problem. And I don't know if you've ever seen any of these pots, but the pot had a skinny top part and a really wide base. Most pots are the opposite way around. They're fat at the top. They go skinny. But for some reason, someone just stupid decided to design this pot. Skinny at the top. So the, it looked great. It looked awesome. But... From a practical point, once you, once you plant something in there and the roots grow and fill, which is most what most potted plants do, they fill the space, they fill that giant space. And if you ever want to um, get that plant out, ain't happening. So I told her this. I said to my client, I said, look, uh, I can get those. The lilies look lovely, by the way. They were like, you know, full, nice, big lilies with big roots and they squeeze out this top and it can't count. They're great. They look really great. They've been there a long, long time, a few years. And um, I said, look, do you, which do you prefer me to do? Because I can get your lilies out. The Probably the best way to keep them intact is to smash the pot because those roots ain't coming out of the top of that hole unless I damage those lilies proper bad. And she had a bit of a quandary. She was kind of like, oh, I love that pot. I really do love that pot, that really annoying pot. <laughs> but I love it. I can see why. It was a beautiful pot. Just the most unpractical pot. And um, she said, but I really like the lilies as well. I don't want you to destroy the lilies. She said, look, I've spent a, a bit of money on that pot. Please don't smash the pot. Okay, I won't smash the pot, but you will do realise uh, these lilies are, and they're not going to be looking that great when the time they come out. So... <laughs> Just, and the only way in is to just you've got to loosen you had to break it up and it was it was a long process but i had to literally stab the crap out of these lilies to save the pot but then hopefully we can replant the lilies as a smaller kind of lily i guess by the time it's come out replant the whole thing in the garden and hope that it comes back and she's She's watching me do this. It's not a pretty sight. It's like a massacre of lilies, really. And she's like crying. She's an old lady. And she's obviously emotional. I don't know why, but she was not... She, it wasn't pretty. It didn't look nice. And she was crying about her lilies. And I was like, well, look, at least I've saved your pot. <laughs> and um, yeah, I got them out. By the time I got them out, they looked horrific. And uh, obviously trimmed them down, but by the time, but we planted them up, and they did eventually come back. Probably not as good for a few years, but um, eventually they came back. But uh, we did save the pot. I, I, to be honest, I don't remember. Did she pile anything back in that pot? I don't know. Um, maybe something you're not so precious about this time. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so well, I'm not massively proud of that moment, you know, massacring lilies, but. I gave her the options. Oh, what can you do? What can you do? Hey, And the other one was this lady who asked me to completely 
overhaul her jungle garden. So she'd live there with her daughter. She lives there with her daughter. And she was, I think we went, I can't even remember whether, it must have been a full day's work. And she, it was a complete mess. So it was a complete jungle. We completely gutted it in terms of, we got rid of all the brambles, all the weeds, it's so weedy. And she had this tree, this is a strange one. We had, she had a tree that's covered in ivy. And she said to me, the tree's dead, the ivy's been there for years, just cut down the, the tree and the ivy all in one. So it's gone, don't want it. Sure, that's fine, no problem at all. So I get my chainsaw out and I start cutting the base of this tree. It's a small tree, it's not a big tree, so it's like, you know, it's gonna fall down. Um, and then halfway, not even halfway, I probably cut, for, it's quite thick, the ivy's surrounded, you can't see the tree. All you can see is this ivy, this big lump at the top, all the base, all covered around with ivory, but, and I'm cutting away. And then these sparks start flying out of the base. I'm like, what, have I hit a nail or something? So I go and have a look. I'm like, what? It's not even a tree. It's a washing line. It's a washing pole, sorry, where the washing line was. And for some reason, she maybe she moved in with it like that, didn't realise. She thought it was a tree. And now I've just blunted my blade on this metal. And um, I think she she felt bad at the end. She, 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 she'd gone out to work. And uh, but I think she ended up buying me a new chain because I mentioned it and she, she, she said oh, I'll replace the chain it's not it's my fault I didn't realize but uh, we ended up having to, it was actually harder to get the whole thing off uh, than it would be to chop down so it took a bit longer but we completely got it done it and, and um, she she was on a night shift I think she'd gone to work and uh, she came back at about three or what'd she say two or three in the morning and um, she'd put on the floodlights to have a look and she was just like amazed about what we'd done in a day. And she, she, she got out, she cracked open, open the, um, cracked open a bottle of champagne with her daughter. She got a daughter out of her bed. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> to celebrate like what a great job we did. And she had a little cry and she was tearful. It's just amazing, like the emotions that, that you know, creating a garden. Um, has and um, or, or transforming someone's garden because it is it's there it's something they they see and it bothers them and they they live there they get to use it do you know what I mean and to have the garden in such a state especially if people like their gardens in in a nice way it takes like a month for it to get out of control if they if you know if it rains here and there you know what I can't do it this week whereas us gardeners we go in all weathers and we just keep keep it maintained. It's, I think that's a really important fact for people to remember that we don't just cut gardens, we actually change people's lives. I said this in a post. Um, what was it? No, I said it in a Facebook page um, that it was it was connected to another story and um, it was connected to one of my cl customers called Janet. Janet. Janet's passed away now, but Janet was such a lovely old lady. She was a big, plump old kind of granny, like your good kind of huggable granny kind of thing. And um, when I started doing the garden, I'd only been there for a month or two, and I'd just really turned around her garden, just a little bit at a time. And her daughter approached me, and she said, my mum is so much happier since you've been doing the garden. And... Um, she said it's made such a difference in her life. She said every time you come, even when she's not there, she knows exactly what you've done and where you've done it because you do such a good job. And uh, she's so happy. And we, we, it was quite funny because I had a good bit of banter with Jan. I remember one time when Jan, um, she, she, she could walk around, but she couldn't walk too far. Um, and she had a mobility scooter in the back of her car one time and I got round they said oh would you mind helping me get my scooter out it's a new scooter and it was like a fold out thing and it had a battery and that stuff and I said yeah, yeah I'll get it out for you got it all out and I got it out got it like revved it up work I said can I have it can I have a go she's like yeah, yeah go for it and I was like, like going around the streets woohoo giving this good old thing a good kind of test out for her and I was she was laughing her head off as I was going Rrr! like a little go-kart and um I remember in winter as well she used to um get me in to do some uh, this was actually a little bit weird because she got me in to do some painting and 
to fit some of these I don't know what they were but it was like a met like a foily kind of thing behind the radiator because she said she was losing heat into the walls or something and she said this will reflect the heat back so I did it for her pasted it in it was stuck to the wall I don't, I don't know if it worked or not it just looked a bit weird to me but I was fitting that and then one time she just came up behind me she gave me this big old hug bless her and um, yeah that was a bit strange but you know I think she loved me a little bit <laughs> grannies and um, I know I'm going on a bit about it, but I, I, I just want to sh express to you the difference we make in people's lives especially the old ladies they like a good chat and stuff and a lot of them live on their own and they don't get to see anyone um i had a great like this one time janet she um jan i used to call her not janet and she um she asked me to dig out these stumps and they they the trick sometimes the stumps that are against the fence are quite tricky and for some reason, it was a nice day. She was out there. I think she was doing a little bit of garden as well. She sometimes likes to get in the garden. And um, I was chopping away at this root, and I was struggling with it. And I said, Jan, would you mind just putting a bit of pressure on there so I can get under? Because it lifted it up a bit. And I could see where the root was. Just, just lean on that a bit. And she leant on it. I started chopping away, and it must have loosened it because it just went straight forward, and she just went head foot, head first into the bush. And there's Jan with her ass stuck, stuck in the air. And I was like, oh no, I think I've just killed Janet. Oh no. So I've actually like helped her up. Babe, the Jan was fine. She was like laughing her head off. Um, Just like that, man. Just that. that People come across, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because you get clients, like the other day I had a client who just were like like proper grumpy people. And you can't quite tell whether they they appreciate what you do because when you do it, they kind of just like, hmm, here's your money. And it still feels like there's no, I don't know, maybe they're like they're, they're depressed or something. I don't know. But both like the husband and the wife, it feels like there's no like reaction to what you like you do you know you do a good job because because everyone else tells you to but some people just don't have the kind of reaction you expect and you're just like i think one of the neighbors said that because he struggled he loved doing his garden and he feels he's got like a love hate with kind of getting someone else to do it because it's his like his little baby and to see someone else do it i think it's a little bit heartbreaking but at the same time, he's grateful because it had kind of gotten out of control. Because he's so old and frail, he can't really keep on top of it. And he needs someone to climb the ladders and do all the heavy lifting and stuff like that. And um, I've made a big difference. And apparently the neighbour said they've been really happy. And the fact that um, I know what I'm doing, I know what the plants are called. Not all of them, by the way. I don't know all the plants. But I know, definitely know what I'm doing. I, even though I don't know the name of the plants, I know what I'm doing. Uh, but every, you know, I'm learning all the time. And sometimes it's hard to gauge, isn't it? But um, everyone's different. <laughs> um, I've got so many stories over the years of uh, just random things, crazy stories, fun stuff. I'm glad I've come up because a lot of the stories are quite crazy and weird and just crazy cuts. But that, this one's quite... I quite like... I've never really told the full story about Jan and it was just such a nice kind of relationship in the the kind of bit of banter we had that was quite nice to share that i quite liked that love to know i really want to interview some gardeners who have like random crazy stories so if anyone's listening out there and they want to reach out to me and they want to say hey look i've got just some crazy story I really want to know that i really i'd love to interview you to, to hear it i want to hear other people's stories as well i've got a few in, in my back pocket um yeah so chuck it in the comments people that's a short and sweet one that's a really short like i think most of the podcasts i've done have been like in the 25 to 30 minute range um but this was a cheeky little one uh guys have a great week monday i'm really looking forward to this week for some reason i've got a really busy week but i've got rent due on thursday so I am full steam this week. I had a day off last week because of the rain. It was just horrific. If it rains this week, I don't care. I'm working the whole thing. So I don't know what you guys do in the rain. I know the Kilted Gardener, he doesn't work in the rain apparently. Um, and um, I'm curious to, to know what you guys do. Anyway, guys, have a great week and I will see you 
uh, next week. But if you want to check out my daily vlogs, I do a daily vlog Monday to Saturday, uh, medium latte, extra hot it's called. We are close, coming up to uh, episode 200. Just little anecdotes and stories, um, little updates and stuff like that on there. News stories as well I put on there. Um, and just general randomness about me and my life and all that kind of jizzle. See you later, guys. I'm off. Bye.